All right, gentlemen, welcome. This is the second part of the blockchain course. At first, let's begin with a little review and quiz. Let me share the screen for you. And I would like you to answer my questions in the chat. So let's see what we have here. This is the Bitcoin white paper. That's where we can learn the very basics of, uh, of the Bitcoin and how it works. We read it last time just a little bit, but now I believe that you understand the, the terms and the terminology that we are using here. So at first, gentlemen, open the chat and uh, answer the question for me. What is peer-to-peer? -peer? If I say something is peer-to-peer, -peer, can you explain what it is in your own words? Write it into the chat. Peer-to-peer. -peer. Can you write it into the chat? Yes, it means yes. It's, it's okay, good, thank you. It means it's something shared between two parties with no third party services, good job. So uh, it is basically that uh, there are computers around the world and they share information together without anybody involved. Uh, we already know peer to peer, I think. Everybody here has tried uh, torrent and uh, you go to Pirate Bay or somewhere and you can download uh, things. So I, I believe that everyone has already seen it in action by downloading films or downloading music and so on. So let's try another another term from last time. So a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Digital signatures provide part of the solution. My question is, gentlemen, what kind of key do I need to provide my digital signature? Do I need the public key or do I need the private key? Which key do I use? Private key, excellent, Carol. So I need private key. I sign my transactions with the private key. And what is the public key for or the address? What is it for? What is the other key, right? So private key is for sending and uh, the public key is for what? So one is for sending, the other one is for, right? It will come to you. So it is for receiving. Okay, to allow receiving. Excellent, Matthew. So because of these signatures of the private keys, then um, we, we can prevent double spending, right? But also we need to avoid the third party. We don't want to use any financial institution. So then there is a solution. We provide a solution to the double spending problem using peer-to-peer -peer network. The network timestamps transaction by hashing them. Can you guys tell me what it means when we hash something? When you hash something, what's a hash? Hash is a drag. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's true, but not here. Do you guys remember? Yeah, mathematical function that creates a small line of text of of uh, of the uh, of output, not input, of output. So I take something, I take the input, and there will be a cre uh, an output created out of this, and an output of a certain input. Every input has one output, good, and every single one has a different output. Excellent. And guys, can I go back from the output into the input? Is it possible? Can you write it into the chat? Can I go from the output into the input? No, I can't, great. But I can easily go from the input to the output. So this is how we encrypt the information. If I change one little thing in the hash or in the information I'm hashing, then uh, I will change the hash. This is how we know that uh, somebody tried to change the information on blockchain and that's why it cannot be changed because the hash would be changed. Then. Um, by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash-based proof of work. Can you guys write uh, your, your own definition of proof of work? Just, uh, don't have to go into details, just say like uh, what it is just in general. Nobody knows? I don't see any message here, so let me help you. Proof of work, no idea, okay, uh, so proof of work is the way that people agree on the blockchain all right maybe you remember we talked about mining so this is the the algorithm the kind of way that we use for everybody on the network to agree on the information that is on the blockchain for example how can how can people agree that uh money was sent from a to b 
right? We need to have some kind of system to uh, allow for new transactions to come in and for everybody to agree that the new information is correct. This is very important. We dived into details last time, but here let's just talk about uh, the general idea. So proof of work is simply the, the way that nodes and the computers on the network agree together that the real thing happened, like the real transaction happened. Okay, uh, thank you. Forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work. So again, if you want to change the information on the blockchain, you would have to mine every block afterwards, which would be impossible for you. The longest chain not only serves as a proof of sequence of the events witnessed. So the longest chain, if you remember after 10 minutes, the longest chain wins uh, on the network. And that's how we know that uh, that was the, the strongest uh, CPU power. So that was the hash power that mined the longest chain, right? Now we have, as long as the majority of CPU is controlled by nodes, what is a node, guys? What, what do we mean if I run a node? Can you write it into the chat? Run a node. PC that is part of the blockchain, excellent. Uh, it is also, um, what do they exactly do on their computer? It is true that they are part of the blockchain. They keep track of the blockchain. So they will have a copy of the blockchain on their computer and they will also update it. Uh, they can mine Bitcoin, but they don't, they don't have to mine. You can just run nodes without mining that is possible. So you will simply keep, a co to keep the copy of the blockchain on your computer and you will serve as the kind of informant for other people. Do I get, uh, no, you don't get Bitcoin if you run a node. Uh, you can only get Bitcoin if you mine it. You can run a node without mining. But of course, why would you run a node if you are not mining, right? There is not much reason to run a node without it. Uh, you, what are the privileges of running a node? There are no special privileges if you don't mine. Then uh, the only reason for running a node might be feeling great that you can always uh, send a transaction without other without connecting to other nodes. Then you can easily send a transaction. Then that's the only way. Otherwise, you always if you don't keep the node on your computer, then you always need to connect to others. That's the only way. All right. Now let's continue. They will generate the longest chain and outspace at attackers. The network itself requires minimal structure. Messages are broadcast on the best effort basis and nodes can leave and rejoin network at will. So nodes can leave and join, leave and join. The same goes for miners. They can leave and join, leave and join, all right? It's all the time. Thank you, gentlemen. So that was a little revision. Let's go back to the real life, okay? Uh, real life now. So we are going to use a new cryptocurrency today. And at first, I would like you to, um, uh, let me show you here in my presentation. Let me go to the slide. Yeah, we were here. <clears throat> so last time we finished with uh, setting up a Bitcoin wallet. But unfortunately, uh, it would be very difficult for me to organize sending Bitcoin here for you. Uh, it might take a long time if we send very little money on Bitcoin. So what we are going to do is something else. We are going to set up a different wallet for a different blockchain called Nimic. Nimic is a much smaller cryptocurrency, uh, but it works exactly on the same principle as Bitcoin. So that means proof of work and mining. Now, uh, we can showcase a transaction in real life. Uh, I have decided to use Nimic for two reasons. Number one, Nimic is very cheap to use. So we can all even send like a very tiny piece of money around the world uh, for little money. Number two, Nimic is very simple to use. So uh, that's very important because it, it, this is the first time for you doing this. So this will be very easy for you, I promise. And, and also, yeah, I forgot the third reason. The third reason is that you can run a node on your browser. This is the only cryptocurrency I know where you can run a node on a browser. And uh, we will see how that works. That's very interesting. So this is how they market it. World's first browser-based blockchain and ecosystem. So gentlemen, let's go to nimic.com. Nimic.com. You can mine it. Yeah, 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 exactly. You, uh, good job. You can mine it with the browser. Um, that means you are, running, you are running a node on your browser and you can mine in your browser. 
but uh, don't expect much money from this. But I mean, feel free. Yeah, if you want to mine it, uh, go ahead. Now let's go to nimic.com. It will look like this. Okay. I already have my wallet, but I'm going to start another one uh, so that you can see how it works. What I want you to do, guys, you are going to start set up a wallet. So we need to create an account. Click here. Okay, just wait a second, it's still loading. So now you see what I can do. Create an account, I can log in or I can connect my ledger as I showed you last time. This is uh, my ledger today. I'm going to need it to sign transactions to send you money, but uh, I'm going to create a new one without ledger. So create account. Now, what the, what's the beautiful thing about this cryptocurrency is that uh, there are avatars here. Now, what's the beautiful thing about this cryptocurrency is that, uh, as you remember, public key is the hashed private key. So if you change the, the private key a little bit, the hash will be different. The public key will be different. So if you change the hash, then the avatar will be different too. Avatar here, the, the picture you will choose, you can choose uh, many other avatars, okay? The avatar you will choose will be a kind of like a picture for your, your, your address. So you always know, you, if you know your picture, you will be able to know if you are sending it to the right address because the pictures are generated based on the, the code, okay? So there will always be the same picture for the same, um, same address. So I don't know, let's just choose one, you know, like this one. And uh, write in your password. All right. So let, let me put one here for fun. Uh, repeat password. All right. And I have just created my account. Let's see. So welcome to the Nimic blockchain. I hope, guys, that you are following. I will need you to send me your, your address soon. And... Uh, all right, so let's see what we have here. <clears throat> this is the login file, guys. If you want to take it seriously and keep this uh, keep this wallet, then as they say here, Nimic does not store your personal data. Use your login file to log in. If you lose this file, now I am locked in on my computer, so it will be okay. If I use my computer, it's fine. But for for uh, logging into the uh, into your wallet on any other computer, will need the login file. All right, so you will need to download it, and that's the paper wallet. If you remember, you will have it. You can print it out, or you can keep it online. But if you keep it online, guys, there can be a little issue that if somebody gets your private key, somebody else, then they can easily steal money from you. All right. So now, this is what we have here. That's why they say your account is not safe yet. Okay, that's why they say that. Now, when you see here, we have a few things. Number one, <clears throat> this is the total balance, how much money I have. Okay, this is the name of my account. This is how much money I have, so I have zero right now. Your transactions will appear here, okay? Then we have, uh, on, the, on the left, you will see, this is the price of Nimic, 0.002. Then we have uh, the price of Bitcoin. 17,712. So last week it was 15,800. It, it has jumped up quite a bit. And now, first, let me show you uh, how we connect to the nodes on, on the browser. It's very interesting because they have the visual representation here. So this is us. Okay. I am in Prague right now. Let's see if I connect to another node. Let's see if I connect. If I don't connect here, then you have very different prices. How, how are the prices different, Matthew? Are they very different? Oh, I think I'm, I'm blocking it here on my account. Let me try it on my another browser. Let me try it on another browser. I have it here. Yeah, you see, now I'm connecting to the nodes here. Can you see it, guys? There are these dots around the world. So there's one in Zhengzhou in China, another one in Hong Kong, Bangkok, Ukraine, Romania, Spain, United States, Brazil, all right, and Chile. There are so many places around the world that I'm connecting to right now. Uh, 
Yeah, so Matthew, the issue is that it is showing you in, in uh, check rounds. That's why the price is different. I, I, it's being shown to me in USD, in, in the dollar. That's why, all right? So that's more or less the same. It should work like this. Uh, it should The price should be more or less the same. Yeah, okay, okay, no problem. Okay, so gentlemen, this is again, you see how I'm connecting to the nodes. I'm connected to six other nodes at the moment. We are on block height number, uh, I cannot even read this, 1,361,000, 896. This is how many blocks we have mined since the, since the start of this blockchain. Now let's go to the real thing, okay? I want you to send me your address at first. So you go back here, you will copy this uh, public key, copy it, okay? You just click on it and it's copied and send the public key into the chat. I will start sending money around. So let's see how it works. Then you will send money back to me. Wonderful, I'm getting the first. Wow, guys, I'm not sure if I will be able to send money to everyone. So this is my account right here. As you see, I'm very rich, right? I have $0.004, so super rich. And I have two NIM. So I'm going to send 0.1 NIM to every person that I, that I hope, you know, you are 20, 20 people here, so I should have money for everyone. Let's start with, with the first one. So I will press send, okay? And now I have the transaction here. Let me put the address here. Tomas, is this your picture? Is this the avatar? Can you, can you answer there? Yes, yes. Wonderful, good. So I will set the amount. 0.1 NIM. As you see, not much money, right? But we can send it. Let's try it. Now I'm using the ledger. So let's see how that works. I'm con I have connected it here. Connect your ledger device. Connect. Wait. Now I need to enter my PIN code. Just a second. Yes, and now let me show you. This will take a while longer because yeah, it's extra security. Now, as you see here, oh, I've signed it already. Yeah, too bad. Sorry, I wanted to show you uh, just how it looks on, on the device right here. But the next the transaction. So as you see here, we have a transaction pending. It will be mined soon. I'm going to send another transaction. Mm, let's try it here. This one. So yeah, your transaction is already mined. So please check your account. Now I will send another one. 0.1. There we go. I hope that the yeah, that should be fine. Let's try it again. Uh, I have maybe eight minutes for this part, so we will see how many transactions we will send. We will see. So again, I'm connecting this. Tomash, did you receive the money? Yes, thank you. We have successfully exchanged uh, exchanged value without any bank right now. Let me let me send another one. Come on, send it. Oh yeah, maybe I should have used the address without the ledger yeah, because uh, it might take a while longer like this. Now, uh, Tomas, can you perhaps send the money to Matthew? Tomas, you have uh, 0 0.1 NIM. Can you send him all your money? Matthew has this address, NQ71. It starts with NQ71. Oh, okay. So I, yeah, so use his code, copy the code and send it to Matthew. I have just sent money to Yuzi and I am sending money now to Matye. Uh, okay, now let me send another transaction. Zero point one. Mm -hmm. 
I can find where uh, Kirill. Yeah, you have the keys. No, you've just sent it there. Okay, another transaction sent. I've just signed it. There we go. 0 0.1 NIM. So let's go to another one. And another one. 0 0.1. You see, is it difficult, guys? What do you think? <laughs> Another transaction sign. There we go. Kirill, your turn. Zero point one. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then Richard, and we're done. Seems like other guys are not really working on this because I don't have any anything from them. Another transaction sign. There we go. Now it's pretty fast because I'm doing it again, my ledger, so it should be much faster. But there's one little problem here, maybe you will see already. I have to manually write down each transaction. I cannot send you know, 20 transactions at the same time, which is the very first, like the main issue of the blockchain of Bitcoin and Nimic. You will see how it can work differently for other blocks, blockchain, sorry. Okay, so I have sent all the transactions. And now, gentlemen, I want my money back. Can you send it back to me? My my public key is here. I've sent, it, I've sent you my private key, sorry, public key. And uh, please send me all, all the money back. I want to see that you can transact it very well. So I'm waiting, yeah? I have, how, how many new? It is not really updated here yet, but it's like 1.4, 1 1.4 1 NIM. It is updated here though. It is updated in my dollar value, but it is not updated in the number of NIM. So gentlemen, I'm waiting for your transaction. You have my public key, so please use it. Use it and send me the money. I hope that you can send it even without the login uh, login file that you should use for logging in. But yeah, it's working. I already see the transaction pending. So let's see. Yeah, wonderful. You see, I, I already see it pending. So now it needs to be mined. And as you see, guys, this chain is very cheap. So we haven't lost anything, right? You are still sending back 0 0.1. It's basically for free, this one. OK, still pending. But now, let's look at the transaction hash. So we are going to check uh, what the transaction looks like on the do. Uh, yeah, uh, let me show you a good question, Kirill, whether Nimic has pumped. Uh, I think it might. I think it might, but uh, there are other better cryptos. The problem of Nimic is that it's its own separate chain, while all the other cryptos that we are going to talk about in a minute, they are connected to Ethereum, right? Which is which creates a better community of people because Nimic stands on its own. But as you see here, there was a huge pump on Nimic. I'll show you. It, it happened maybe two months ago. But look, in one year, Nimic jumped 350%. So I mean, if you look at the year scale, you could have tripled your money. But this is what happened to Nimic, okay? It was just in April, and then boom, right here, to one cent all the way. So from uh, 0 0.2 so times 20, 20 times in two months, basically. And then it, it dropped all the way here. But it happened to a lot of other cryptos that are not Bitcoin. It happened to a lot of them. So uh, to your question, look, I don't know what the future will be. I have no idea. It all depends on how many people use it, all right? If more people use it, then it will be more successful, obviously, okay? So uh, thank you, gentlemen. Your transactions are now confirmed. Now let me see it on the Nimic Explorer. So let's check the Explorer. You can, so here is the transaction. I can see who sent money to whom. And, uh, ah, sorry, sorry, I clicked wrong once again. So uh, here, this is the block number, one confirmation. That means there's already one block put behind it. 
the more blocks there are, the safer it is to assume that the transaction will not be changed. That means it will not be rejected by other nodes because there will be a longer chain. So the longer the chain is, the more likely it is that your, your transaction is already confirmed 100%. One confirmation is not good enough. You need maybe, you know, six. If you have six confirmations, you can be super sure that it will not be changed. Uh, okay, Blog Explorer, let's see. So this is the Explorer, Blockchain Explorer for uh, Bitcoin. This is the Explorer for Nimic. How much uh, Nimic did miners? Very little, very little. But the thing, uh, they didn't get much for mining our transactions. But uh, look, they didn't get much from the fees, Kirill. They didn't get much from the fees that we paid, but they got a lot from the inflation of Nimic. If you remember, I said that with each mine block, in, a, in blockchain uh, of Bitcoin, for example, you get extra newly minted Bitcoin. So they, they got extra minted uh, NIMIC, and I believe we'll be able to see it here. Okay, so, uh, so the sender is here. So they got maybe like 3000 NIMIC, I think, 3000 NIMIC, which is very little, but I mean, considering that you can mine it on your computer, it's uh, pretty easy. Now, so this was the sender recipient this is the hash of our of our transaction then we have the date when we have the value how much we have the fee zero there must be something but it's so little that it's not even here uh validity start height this is the block that we start confirmations zero for now okay as you see that nimic blockchain is very simple there there is not much inf much other information here so yeah that's the thing okay gentlemen so this is real life all right, this is the real life of cryptos. So now here are a few issues that we can have with uh, with Nimic or with, with uh, Bitcoin. The issues are following. Let me show you. Let's go back to our presentation. So the problem is Bitcoin is limited in its functionality as the value gets transacted only manually. That is important. I cannot really uh, program and say, hey, uh, send money to, to my friend tomorrow at six. I cannot do that. Or I cannot say, hey, I want to send 20 transactions right now to different people. I cannot do it easily, right? Just like uh, just writing it somewhere. You would have, to, if you can do it with Bitcoin, but you would have to code it yourself. And it's very difficult for, for normal people. So oh, we have other solutions for that. And we are going to start with the second biggest cryptocurrency called Ethereum, because uh, Ethereum really opened up the world of opportunities in, uh, in the blockchain space. So this is the guy who created uh, Ethereum. This is the Ethereum logo. And this is, his name is Vitalik Buterin, a Russian programmer. He was very young when he came up with this. What he basically did, he opened Pandora's box further with uh, Ethereum, and now the second biggest cryptocurrency, and the smart contracts innovation. This is very important, smart contract. This is the new terminology here. So what he did, he took Bitcoin, he took the, the code of Bitcoin, and he innovated the, the code so that the money can be programmed. That means the, you can put some kind of like uh, conditions into uh, what can happen and then the money will act on their own based on the based on the code so now this is a beautiful theory but let's see how this can work in real life smart contracts allow to program money and its behavior on the blockchain such as conditional transactions so i would say okay if you have one 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 from school you will get this money or if uh, this ha if a happens then you will get the money okay for example, you can program money in DeFi. DeFi is decentralized finance. So as already uh, you can hear in the word centralized finance, CeFi, this is where you have banks and the banks will allow you to, okay, here's the money for you, use it for buying a house or something. They, they are centralized entities. So DeFi works on the code, nothing else. So what can you do? You can uh, uh, borrow money. Of course, there are laws with it. So you will have to sign a contract. 
but basically you are not really uh, borrowing money from a bank. You are borrowing money from all the people who provide the money on the blockchain for you. And if they agree that they, 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 can, they can give you the money and they can uh, lend you the money, let's say. So what can you do with uh, Ethereum and today even with more cryptos, but Ethereum is the most advanced in this. You can have decentralized finance. So it can look uh, like having loans, which can, okay, loans. You can use Aave or Kyber, there are, but there are a lot more other cryptos. You can use uh, casinos. So there are casinos online. You connect your, your wallet to the website and you can just stake your Ethereum. You say, okay, here's two Ether, $900, and you will play games. And if you win, you will get more ETH. And, and then that means more money, right? So uh, you can also program casinos like this. You can uh, play online. You can have a marketplace. So where people change them, exchange uh, uh, different tokens. They can exchange even a house for money, whatever. You can program whatever you want. Uh, and this is the most popular marketplace that is decentralized. It is running purely on code, nothing else. There's no boss in there. Betting on games and matches. So uh, you can play games, you can play CS, and you will say, okay, if team A wins, uh, I will put the one Ethereum here and we will play for one Ethereum. That would be like $450 at the moment. So uh, then if the team A wins, then they will get the ETH. If team B wins, they will get the ETH that uh, you stake. And this is, again, working without any bank. All right? Remember, guys, this is working on a code. So you can play games and you can uh, bet each other who will win. And you can actually play for money online without you knowing the person. That is very important. Because if I play with my friend, then, yeah, we can agree. Right? I can trust him. But what if I want to play with some strangers? Like who is going to ensure that the money was really sent, right? And the real money was sent. So you can do it by locking your money in the in the smart contract on blockchain. And the smart contract will then see who won the game. And then the smart contract will release the money on its own. It cannot be bribed. It cannot be changed. So this is the beautiful thing about it. Now, however, you can also organize social media. Hive.block, let me show you. Uh, here. Uh, okay, let me put it here. So hive block. You can set up your account, and it's it's a block already, as you can as you can uh, hear in the now in the name. And it's over here. You can uh, post your articles. People might see it, and they can upvote it. And this is, you can get money for this, right? And now, again, the money is distributed based on how many people are watching, how many people are commenting, how many people are liking your, your content. So it is not like on Facebook or Twitter where the, all the money goes to the centralized guy at the top. This is here where it is free market, where uh, you, are, you are getting as much money as the value you produce on the chain. Everything there is stored on the chain. So again, there are pros and cons to this. Uh, because you cannot, for example, delete your account because it is stored on blockchain, right? These kind of things are, they are cons too. So um, you, you, can, you can check it in your free time. Feel free to, you know, create your own account and start blogging. Maybe you can make some money from this. You will get a wallet and uh, there is a native cryptocurrency to this. But of course, you can easily change it to blockchain, to Bitcoin or anything else you need. So this is one example. Then we have uh, library.com. Library.com uh, I have here. This is YouTube running on blockchain. So uh, here, library, let me show. This is at least you can see, because library is decentralized, doesn't this mean that the content can be removed? You can read about this. This is some basic information about the library. But if I open library, you will see that it's just like YouTube. You will find uh, videos. And uh, the people around the world, it is peer to peer. They are hosting your video. So it is not on one centralized server on the internet or, or sorry, of uh, YouTube. It will just decide, OK, I don't like this guy. Let's censor him. All right? Because here it is decentralized. Again, this video is hosted by many people. 
and it is also locked on the blockchain. This information that uh, this video belongs to you. I'm not sure, I have never used library myself, but I know about it. I'm not sure whether you can make money from this, whether you can monetize it, but I think you can. I think you can, I'm not sure though. All right, so this is another example. You can check it in your free time. Uh, then another thing, betting and gaming. As I told you, you can bet and uh, play games. There's already this one, chaingames.io. Chain All right, battles, win. Oh my God, what's happening? This must be my browser. Sorry about it. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing this. I checked it yesterday. It was working well. Uh, so anyway, you can play games. You can play, I don't know, some crypto card. But there are, there are other things you can do. So you buy the tokens. But I know they are going to extend it to games like Call of Duty or Counter-Strike. And you will be able to create a wallet uh, and basically just start playing with uh, their native token. It's called Chain, this, this token. And you can then win money by playing games or, or lose money, of course. All right. So that's the thing. Uh, it's called chaingames.io. Those are some examples. All right. They are already, it's, it's all brand new right now. It is all coming out. It's very fresh, all these things. So uh, this is just for you to see that there's like real life uh, implications of this. That I'm not just talking about some beautiful theory that it already works and it's there. I've already tried some of this. So, for example, Uniswap, I use all the time. Uniswap, I use it all the time and it's working perfectly just on the code. You can build virtually anything you can imagine if you are skilled enough to code it. So, you, whatever you want, you can decentralize anything you want, but you need to be a good programmer. Now, such a program is called DAP, Decentralized Application which automatically handles money and unknown users can trust each other without any third party. So I don't need a bank and uh, you will be able to interact with other people on the internet, exchanging money automatically based on a contract. There you go. So this is the, the evolution of the internet. We started with web one, we started with HTML and CSS. Very boring because if you only use this, you will just have uh, the, the content of the website and it will look boring. It will just be, you know, put it on the right, right or put it on the left or put it at the bottom, put it at the top. But then the second evolution came, JavaScript. JavaScript allowed us to uh, change the, the, uh, the, visual, the visual side of the website, but also we can now stream videos. We can do a lot of things with JavaScript. And now the third part, is Solidity. Solidity is the new programming language, very similar to JavaScript. And these are the smart contracts. So you have layers of the internet. Layer one, HTML, the content and uh, the position of things. Number two, JavaScript. You can program uh, how it interacts with people, with video, with pictures, with uh, animations, things like that. And Solidity, now put the third layer on the internet and this is where you can interact with people and exchange value uh, between people without any bank again there there's currently over 6000 cryptocurrencies many of which are ERC20 tokens built on top of ethereum smart contract so when you have the smart contract of ethereum you can create a new kind of cryptocurrency it's called token but it is running on the Ethereum blockchain. So as I showed you before with the chain games, there, there is a native token called chain, but the chain basically runs on Ethereum anyway, but it is a, it's a separate, um, separate token that looks like a different cryptocurrency, but it is running on the blockchain of uh, Ethereum. All right, gentlemen. So <laughs> that's all from me when it comes to blockchain 101. Uh, I believe that Ethereum really, this is, e Ethereum is exactly the thing that really uh, kicked off the whole mania because now we can work with Bitcoin more than just sending the manual transaction to someone. But now I can actually program money to, to be automatic. I can program a bank, basically. I can program a bank. Bitcoin on its own is not really uh, good enough to be a bank because you, you just send the money manually. But now with Ethereum, you can program how the money, 
behaves on the on the blockchain. You cannot do it with much with Bitcoin. You can just say, okay, I send A to B. That's it. All right. This is why I believe that uh, Ethereum really um, re Ethereum is the thing. Bitcoin is not going anywhere. Of course, it will stay to be like gold. It will be like asset, right? To to invest in, but. Uh, a lot of the money, like the, the real life usage of blockchain is run on Ethereum at the moment, like the real life thing. OK, now, gentlemen, let's check the summary. Uh, let's just see a video uh, where they will talk about Bitcoin, blockchain and Ethereum. And it is will take maybe 10 minutes. So just uh, sit comfortably and enjoy. And now, and then in the last five minutes, we can talk about uh, how to continue with your studies in your free time. So let's check. Feel free to skip ahead. If not, let's get started. I'll use an analogy to explain how a blockchain works. Let's look at a bank. Suppose that Alice wants to send money to Bob with a wire transfer. All of her money is stored inside a bank account which has two primary purposes. It keeps track of how much money she has, and it provides an online portal that allows her to perform the... Guys, can you see the video and can you hear it? I just want to be sure. Yes. Yeah? So, uh, yeah, and Kirill, yes, it can be like gambling. You can gamble on blockchain, of course. That's, uh, you know, chain games or the casinos I described. Okay, let's continue. Wire transfer to Bob. Behind the scenes, the bank has two primary technical features that make this possible. A database, the bank maintains a database ledger of all Alice's transactions to determine her account balance and tra oh, sorry. transaction history. And a network, the bank uses a network to process wire transfers so that funds can be sent from her account to Bob's. Blockchain presents an alternative to this model by eliminating the need for a bank altogether. Instead of sending money to Bob via wire transfer, she can send him cryptocurrency directly with a blockchain. Much like a bank, the blockchain gives her a place to safely store her funds and send money to Bob. It replaces the two primary technical features of a bank. A database, it also keeps track of how much money Alice has. And a network, Alice can connect to a blockchain in order to send money. When she does, the blockchain processes her transaction and moves the funds from her account to Bob's. Because it serves both of these roles, you can think of a blockchain as both a network and a database at the same time. Let's examine both of these concepts further. A blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network, meaning it's a system of nodes or computers that all talk to one another. It is responsible for processing transactions so that Alice can send money to Bob. She simply needs to connect to a node on the network in order to initiate her transaction. And the blockchain handles the rest behind the scenes, which we'll see more of in the next section. Now let's examine how blockchain functions like a database. Each node on the network maintains a copy of all the data on the blockchain. For example, they all know how much money Alice has in her account. Instead of a bank storing all this data inside a central database, the blockchain stores it redundantly on each node in the network. This makes it virtually impossible to tamper with the data. For example, Alice cannot manipulate her account balance because all of the other nodes know exactly how much money she really has. And really quickly, it's important to note that blockchain and cryptocurrency are not the same thing. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency but blockchain is the underlying technology behind Bitcoin. Blockchains can be used for other purposes besides cryptocurrency, which I'll demonstrate throughout this tutorial. Now, how does a blockchain work? Let's continue on with the example from the previous section. Suppose Alice wants to send some Bitcoin to Bob. In order to do this, Alice and Bob each need an account on the Bitcoin blockchain. Their accounts are much like their usernames. Alice must know Bob's username or account address in order to send cryptocurrency to him. Next, Alice needs a Bitcoin wallet in order to send the transaction. In this scenario, her wallet reflects that she owns 10 Bitcoin. This is called her account balance. Being very generous, she decides to send one Bitcoin to Bob through this three-step process. 
First, she enters Bob's account address as the recipient. Then she specifies that she wants to send one Bitcoin to Bob. Finally, she signs the transaction in order to make it official. In this last step, Alice signs the transaction with her private key. If her account address is like her username, then her private key is a lot like her password. It's sensitive data stored inside her Bitcoin wallet, which she won't share with anyone else. Her private key allows her to create digital signatures that authorize her transactions on the blockchain, like sending one Bitcoin to Bob. At this point, Alice has done everything she needs in order to complete the transaction. The rest is processed behind the scenes on the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's see how that works. After Alice's transaction has been signed, it is sent to the Bitcoin network. A select group of nodes called miners process her transaction and record it to the blockchain. These Bitcoin miners must solve a mathematical puzzle called a proof of work problem in order to record Alice's transaction. Each miner competes with one another to solve a cryptographic puzzle where they must correctly guess a random encrypted number called a nonce. The miner that guesses this number first submits their answer or proof of work, and this authorizes them to record the transaction to the blockchain and receive a Bitcoin reward for winning the mining competition. Whenever they record it, they create a new transaction record on the blockchain. Groupings of these transactions are called blocks, which get changed together to make up the blockchain. And during the mining process, the network reaches consensus, meaning that each node verifies that they have the same valid data as everyone else. This is called the consensus algorithm. Effectively, each node says, yes, I have a valid copy of Alice's transaction. If they all agree, the transaction is complete, and the cryptocurrency gets transferred from Alice's account to Bob's. When Bob checks his wallet, he'll see that he now has one Bitcoin. Why do we need blockchain? Well, let's continue on with our banking example. Here are some reasons Alice might choose to use a blockchain to store and send money. One reason is transaction speed. Suppose Alice and Bob live in different countries. An international wire transfer could be Days to complete. Instead, Alice can send Bob Bitcoin in a matter of minutes. Also, transaction fees. Let's say Bob is a merchant and Alice wants to pay him money for a very expensive service, maybe $10,000. If Alice paid Bob with a credit card, Bob would incur a transaction fee around 2% or $200. But because Bob is Alice's friend, she pays him with Bitcoin to save him money. Now Bob incurs no transaction fees and Alice only pays a few extra dollars to send money to Bob. There's no third parties. They don't need to sign any documents or wait for clearance in order to send money. Another reason is transparency. Instead of a bank storing all of her data, she can verify her account balance and transaction history on a secure network. Also security. Traditional databases and IT systems can be very vulnerable to attack. In blockchain, it's virtually impossible to hack the public ledger in order to change Alice's account balance or transaction history. And finally, anti-fraud. Because blockchain transactions are publicly verifiable, they enable companies to build anti-fraud solutions that make it very hard to fake transactions or embezzle funds. Now let's talk about how to become a blockchain developer. Up until now, we've discussed how to send money with the blockchain. Now I want to focus on how to use blockchain to actually build applications. Unfortunately, Bitcoin is quite limited in this area. So we'll look at a different blockchain called Ethereum instead. In addition to sending cryptocurrency, Ethereum allows developers to create decentralized applications or apps that run on the blockchain. Ethereum achieves this with smart contracts, which are programs that run on the blockchain. Let's see how these apps work. First, let's look at how a web application works, and then we'll compare and contrast the two. Normally, when you use a web application, you use a web browser to load a web page, and that talks to a central web server over a network. All the code for this app lives inside the central server, and all the data is housed inside a central database. Anytime you transact with this application, you must interact directly with the central server. This presents a few problems. The application creators could change the code on the server or the data in the database at any time because they have full control. We can eliminate these problems by using the blockchain instead. Here's how it works. We can use our browser to load a web page. 
And that talks directly to the blockchain instead of a backend server and database. We can store all of the application code and data on a blockchain instead of this central server. This is a fully transparent and trustworthy way of knowing that the application code and data won't change. But why is that? All of the backend code for the application will be made up of smart contracts. These are the building blocks of blockchain applications. All of the code for the smart contracts is immutable or unchangeable. Once the code is put on the blockchain, no one can update it or tamper with it. And we know that it will work the same way every single time. Smart contracts are written in a programming language called Solidity, which looks a lot like JavaScript. They're in charge of reading and writing data to and from the blockchain and executing any business logic that we program. They work a lot like a microservice on the web. Also, they're called smart contracts because they represent an unchangeable digital covenant or agreement. All of the data for the application will be stored as transaction records inside of blocks on the blockchain. As we saw earlier, each node on the network maintains a copy of all this data to ensure that it is secure and unchanged. So that's how a blockchain application works from a high level. In the next section, we'll get a closer look by building one together step by step. Okay, gentlemen. So you have the video there. If you want to set up your own DAP, if you want to create it, then you can follow this video. It has two, um, two hours and 45 minutes. There is this great uh, YouTube channel called App University. You can study from this for free. Uh, but let me give you a few more tips, all right? So uh, here are some useful links that I left in the, in the presentation. So first, B uh, Bitcoin white paper. The second is the code of Bitcoin. The third, blockchain explorer. The, th the fourth one, CoinGecko. You can check the prices of uh, cryptos. Ledger, you can order your own ledger. It costs about 2,000 Czech crowns, I believe. Uh, so do it only if you really want to invest more. Then Binance, this is where you can uh, easily change it, like uh, the money we use every day. It's called fiat money into crypto and the other way around. Then we have Binance.com. Uh, this is Binance Jersey, J, uh, J -E. Binance.com, this is where you can uh, you basically change between different cryptocurrencies, but it's centralized. If you want to have it decentralized, then you can use Uniswap, but this is only for Ethereum. And uh, uh, can I actually buy and sell Bitcoin within the uh, Not yet, not yet, Kirill. You, you cannot uh, sell uh, or buy Bitcoin on the MIG website, but you will soon be able to store it there. So you will have a, a big, uh, Bitcoin wallet on the MIG website. Okay, then we have uh, Depp University. That's what we have just seen. You can uh, check all his other videos. And basically, you can learn Solidity just from that. But you will need to have some kind of project and work on this too. For this, you can go to academy.ivanontech.com. It costs some money, all right? An academy where you can access lots of courses for coding blockchain-based apps. It is paid, but it's amazing. I am a member of this academy, and I can really recommend it for sure. Um, now, you can also check the YouTube channel of this guy who created the academy. Every day, he has interesting videos about the news in the blockchain space uh, or about the prices. You know, he will talk about lots of lots of things. And the last one here is uh, an interesting article from LinkedIn. Maybe you've already seen it. I left it in the announcement. Uh, on Google Classroom, but what I want to show you here is that if you decide to become a blockchain developer, I mean, if you are learning how to code already and uh, you are studying, I don't know, let's say Python or something, lots of people already know that, all right? That's the thing. So it, in my opinion, but I'm not telling you what to do, all right? Blockchain is the number one most in-demand skill right now. This is an article from January 2020. And uh, the skill companies need most in 2020. They took the data from LinkedIn. LinkedIn is this uh, social network for um, looking for a job. And they are the top five skills and top 10 skills. As you see, blockchain is the number one hard skill that is wanted at the moment on the market. So even more than the cloud computing, even more than artificial intelligence.
And the reason is that you are replacing banks, gentlemen. If you are replacing institutions as big as these, we have all seen uh, how big the, the buildings of banks are and how rich they are. So imagine like uh, building something new that can replace uh, and at least take even 2% of their business. Even if you take 2% of their business, you will be super rich. So imagine doing this. That's I, I believe that's why blockchain is going up. And even if you don't really program money, you can at least program uh, an application that runs separately on blockchain, which will improve the lives of people. If you don't want to see money in it, you can at least see it by improving lives of people by giving them more privacy and um, security in their life. So that's at least, uh, you can look at it in many ways. That's why government wants to block cryptos. That's true. They want to control it by creating their own uh, based uh, blockchain that they can control in a centralized manner. So yes, of course. That's why uh, people have a kind of, this will be a discussion for the third video uh, we will see. We will see. We will talk about it there. So anyway, gentlemen, that's all from me today. It's exactly one hour. So I really want to thank you a lot uh, for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed this little course. Uh, of course, starting next week, we are going back to our usual topics. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again. And I hope that you enjoyed it. All right. So take care, guys. It was a pleasure. And the third video on blockchain will be voluntary. That means you don't have to come. Even if I'm there alone, I'm okay. You can post your questions into the Google Docs that I left on uh, the Google Classroom announcement. Leave your question there. But I will tell you when I'm going to answer these questions. So you are free to come to the, the lesson and have a discussion. So we can have a chat, all right? But if not, feel free to leave the question there, leave it there, and then you can check the video later when I answer on my own because I don't want to take up your precious time. I know you are busy. So the third video where I answer all your questions and uh, have a discussion about the pros and cons of this or about you know the future for, for blockchain, this is for the third video. So the video one and video two were about how it works. The third video is will be a discussion about the future and about the pros and cons. So oh, thank you very much, gentlemen. That's all from me today, and I will see you next time. Okay? Bye-bye. Take care.